ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار Indeed, all praise and thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we thank Him, we seek His guidance. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is His final messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran is very explicit and very clear about how al-bashariya or mankind and womankind how they are to be judged and how they are to be looked at and how or what is the true competition between ourselves and that who ranks above another with regards to ourselves that our ranking is not based upon any worldly level whether it is to do with fame shuhra to do with wealth to do with the status or your lineage that all of these on yawm al qiyama will not serve any purpose or any benefit to that individual but rather from an islamic perspective what will serve to benefit us when you when we all stand in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are your deeds your actions that the one who prays in as-saf al-awwal who prays in the first row in the masjid has a greater status a greater reward than the one who comes late and prays at the back that the one who is quicker to give charity the one or from the believers who believed before the conquering of makkah their status is higher amongst the sahaba radiyallahu anhum that if a person who participated in the battle of badr was given a title of a badri a person who participated in that battle as opposed to others who did not who embraced islam later but all of this is based upon what the fact that you participated in the battle striving and say, sacrificing for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being in the first row offering your salah at an earlier time than others and so on فَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. To be quick and hasten to that what is good. That your ranking or our ranking, the best of us, is the one who, is, who has the most fear, the most conscious, or the most consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most taqwa. إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ The most honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has most taqwa and that these worldly gifts or worldly positions and whatever is accumulated will come and it will go but from an islamic perspective 100% most certainly regardless of who you are where you have come from your tribe your nationality your color all of these things islam came to erase because this is what was used before to distinguish between the people whether it was the arabs in the times of al jahiliya that certain tribes had a status over others or whether it was maybe from ahlul kitab nahnu sha'bullah al mukhtar we are chosen people of allah ala za'mihim as they claim or that they would in their practice because they were never told and they don't have solutions 
that they may have their scripture in one hand and food in another. That Islam, alhamdulillah, never, teaches, never taught us this. We have a real life example for the solutions of mankind. So the ills and vices that exist in societies, in all their forms and shapes, judging people by what they wear or how they look, Islam came to remove that. Because this will bring about diseases within the heart. This will bring about an unhealthy competition between people where the strong consume the weak. However, our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in his teachings in Khutbatul Wada' in the final sermon that he gave in the Hajj, he sallallahu alayhi wasallam gave a universal message about the status of people. That there is no standing or ranking of an Arab over a non-Arab or non-Arab over an Arab, over the black, over the white, over the red and so on. That the best of you is the one who has the most taqwa. But you find societies who have these problems, racism, being uh, unfair to women, oppression, and so on. Because these societies don't have any guidance in these matters, they have to artificially manufacture certain quote-unquote norms to force people to accept certain customs or beliefs. But because you're not internalizing this belief, let's say, for example, eradicating racism. You're not telling the people to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a non-Muslim society for that, for that matter, that you should remember where you all came from. If you see two people arguing over race, for example, as, as a Muslim, you can quite easily tell them, Ittaqillah. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with such a statement that the best of you is the one who has the most taqwa. So we have something, alhamdulillah, which internally guides us to that what is correct. And other societies don't have that. So they bring about artificially manufactured, as I mentioned, norms and social customs for people that don't be racist. And it comes from above, don't be racist. But, but why? In a society that don't have this guidance, why shouldn't I be? Or if a person has that sickness in their heart, the person is questioning, why shouldn't I judge people if I have this within myself? Because there are no solutions in these other ways or other systems. So we feel blessed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the measurement in how that we should understand our rank amongst ourselves. And that is not by what we wear or how we look but how we prepare ourselves and how we deal with Rabbul Alameen. And it is by these understandings that a society can be corrected. And for this reason, we need to be examples for other ways of life, people that we live amongst. So as Muslims, we are at the forefront. We are the leaders in such matters. Where there is no such thing at least there shouldn't be things like racism, judging people by the color of their skin, or because of the nationality or where they came from, or what's happening in their country that they should be, for whatever reason, looked down upon. We remind ourselves that the best of you are those who have the most taqwa, and we ask Allah wa ta'ala to increase us in taqwa. Ameen. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم من كل ذنب فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين All praise belongs to Allah and may the peace and blessings of Allah Taala be upon his final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So the verse that I mentioned to you in Surah Al-Hujarat, in akramakum indallahi atqaakum, the most honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the one who has the most taqwa. 
This is the theory, this is the command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us. But we also have the actions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in how he would teach the Sahaba, choosing specific Sahaba because of the, because of the skill set that they had, regardless of where they came from. Abdullah ibn Zayd radiallahu anhu, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, they had a dream about the Adhan. They came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, relay, relayed that dream to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about what to say regarding the call of prayer. That they were discussing whether it should be a bell or a horn and whatnot. And as we know that the dream, the good dream is a portion of revelation, divinely inspired. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said to the one who had the dream, and maybe it comes to your mind, the one who had the dream, the one who's memorized the dream, you have the blessing and the bounty to make the adhan. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, teach Bilal the words that you heard in your dream. Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was an individual at his time was part of, in terms of society, the lowest of the low, who had no value, who was a slave during his time, and heard about Islam, accepted Islam, without any thinking or having doubts about it, in a pure state of fitrah. But the Prophet ﷺ chose Bilal. So the first adhan to be heard was a person at that time who was a non-Arab, a person who was originally from Habasha. And the first adhan upon returning to Mecca and the conquest of Mecca, when the Prophet ﷺ returned to Mecca, freeing it from shirk and whatnot, the Prophet ﷺ ordered Bilal to make the adhan, the first adhan to be heard in this manner, again by Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So we have a living example of how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would teach the Sahaba that regardless of where you come from, it doesn't matter. It has no value. But what has value is that you have the skill set, you have the ability that you are the right person to do that job. And that the Prophet Sallallahu on how many occasions would choose various companions whose origin was maybe non-Arab, that he, alayhi sallam, would not choose people from even from his own family. But this is how we should be as also. This is the living example, or the lived example that we need to follow, so that we can prosper, and that we can flourish as a community. And after, and this is one portion of course, one part of rectifying our internal parts of our society, if we have this mentality, then you will find Allah Taala will make things easier for us and bless us in the endeavors that we are all searching and trying to achieve. So we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to clean and rid our hearts of anything that may cause rancor, hatred between our brothers, between our sisters, based upon something from where they have come from, which Islam came to outlaw, to remove, and that the mahabba that the love that should be between us is based upon brotherhood, loving them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember that you will never taste sweetness, true sweetness of faith, until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us all, to protect our families and to guide us to the straight path. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid Allahumma a'izz al-islam wa al-muslimin Allahumma a'izz al-islam wa al-muslimin Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana ya rabb al-alamin Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar wa qumu ila salatikum yurhamakum Allah